of materials with energy. A lot of the recent A-level physics exams, they've been combining at least two different topics together in one question. So let's have a look. And first I'm going to use a highlighter to highlight all the key information. So this is a bungee jumper of that this much mass. Um, falls through a distance of 31 meters from where they currently are. The unstretched length is 19 meters of this rope. That's the length from here until it's, well, not stretched. The stiffness is given also, or this, this can also be called the spring constant, by the way. It's then asked for the extension after the person falls through 31 meters from where they currently are. So if they're currently here and they fall through 31 meters, that means they're 30 meters below the platform. Sorry, my lines are awful. But then it also says the unstretched length is 19 meters earlier on in the question. Somewhere, yeah, just here. So if the unstretched length is 19 meters from the platform downwards, but then it stretches to a length of 30 meters below the platform, 30 take away 19 is 11. And that's the extension. Now, um, to help with this question, I've put this equation for extension relating to extension and force. Um, extension can also be called little e or little x, so try not to get confused by that. So the resultant force here is the stiffness of the wire, or the spring constant, like I mentioned, multiplied by this extension of 11, which in a calculator will get you a value of... Sorry, I need to do this with my calculator. 14180. Great, now let's move on to part C. So it says the extension of the bungee rope is 5 meters when the jumper's center of mass has fallen through a distance of 25 meters. Okay, use the principle of conservation of energy to calculate the speed of the jumper in this position. So let's think about the energy changes that happens. If a person is falling from here, off the platform, well, at a higher point, there's more gravitational potential energy. If a person falls, initially they'll have zero kinetic energy because they're stationary. They'll also have zero elastic strain energy. I'm just going to call that ESE because the wire is not being stretched. The rope is not being stretched, so there's no energy being stored in the rope. But then as the person falls, their GPE decreases because they're at a lower height above the ground. Just a reminder, GPE's MGH is dependent on the height. So the lower the person is above the ground, the less GPE there is. Kinetic energy is a half mv squared. Elastic strain energy is a half um, fx or a half kx squared. These equations are given in your equation sheet. Now... What we do to find the speed of the jumper in this position is we use the fact that the kinetic energy is the gravitational potential energy take away the elastic strain energy. The reason we can definitely say this is true is because we're assuming that the decrease in gravitational potential energy, it turns into kinetic energy as the person speeds up going downwards, but also it turns into elastic strain energy because the wire ends up being extended, like it mentions here. The person falls through a distance of 25 meters, meaning that the extension would be six meters. Sorry, five meters, because we have to take into account of this one meter here. So if they fall one meter and then they fall another 24 meters, 24 take away the unstretched length of 9 is 19 is 5. So that means that the extension is 5 meters. Great. So let's use that. So MGH for gravitational potential energy is the mass that I mentioned before. 75 times G, which is 9.8 or 9.81, times the height that it falls, which is 25 meters. And we take that away. So we take away from that a half kx squared, which is a half times the spring constant of 380 multiplied by the extension squared, which is 5 squared. Now, after you get that value of kinetic energy, which I'm just going to quickly get, I'm going to do the rest of the question here, actually, because, sorry, I'm running out of space. I'm just going to quickly type that in my calculator. Take away a half times... That's K of 380 
times five squared is one three six four three and six four three. Um, I'm just going to write this out a little bit neater, just in case you wanted to look at the notes. So that's we're taking away a half kx squared, a half times k, which is 380 times the extension of 5 squared. And that gets you to this value here. So that's our kinetic energy. So we make the equation of half mv squared equal to that. Um, from here, we know that mass itself is 75, so we can just say that a half times 75 times v squared is equal to this. We then div well, a half of 75 is just 37.5. We divide both sides by 37.5 and use square root both sides too. Let's do it step by step. So we do 13643 divided by 37.5. From there, you square root both sides. And then you get that the velocity is actually equal to, let's do this. Sorry, normally I have the answers right now, but I think I just forgot to write it for this specific question. It's 19.1 meters per second. Hopefully that made sense. If you enjoyed the video, please uh, like the video, um, subscribe. I'll post a new video every day. And if you have any tutoring inquiries, just send me an email at more.excelleneducation.co.uk. It's in the link in the description. Thanks for watching.